Hello everybody, welcome. We're talking about the food chain. And as you can see, we have a huge iceberg behind us. We are coming live to you from the Arctic Ocean, not too far away from the North Pole, about 450 nautical miles away. Very close indeed, it's very, very cold. And we're very lucky this week because we are joined by Danielle, who is a marine biologist. Say hello, Danielle. Hello everybody, how are you doing? Now this week, we're gonna be researching the food chain, the mechanism that joins all the organisms together from the smallest organisms on the planet to the biggest. And today, we were very fortunate fortunate indeed because we managed to see a blue whale. Now, a blue whale is very intriguing for the children out there in the world. Tell us some of the amazing facts about this mighty creature that we saw today. So the first and the most important thing is that we have uh, a special creature here. When we talk about blue whales, we talk about one of the whales that was most hunted in the past. So we almost so we almost wiped out the species from the oceans. So today they are slightly recovery, and I always say it, every single blue whale we see, it's a special and unique sighting. Wow, and I understand that there are some amazing facts about blue whales, yes. big facts, what are yes. they? First of all, the biggest animal that ever swim or been in the planet Earth. Bigger than a dinosaur? Bigger than any dinosaurs, yes. Wow. So they can reach up to 33 meters. Most of the whales uh, will be on the average of 27 meters and weight 160 tons. Oh my goodness, that's huge. That's 160 yes. cars. If you put it on, on a line, it's about uh, eight elephants. Oh my goodness, yes. that's huge. And what about, I understand the, the blue whale's heart is ginormous. Yeah, so the blue whale heart, it, it's the same size of a beetle car. Oh my goodness. Uh, and a kid, a four year old kid can actually cross into the veins of this blue whale. That so it's is massive. astounding. Yes. And so we were very lucky to see one of these whales. Yes, indeed. And they were feeding today, so it's quite awesome behavior to see. They were kind of coming on this surface every five, seven minutes, and we could see their spout, which it can reach up to 12 meters high. My goodness, that's crazy. And tell me, I understand that the, the blue whale came after the dinosaurs. How did that happen? Yes. So some of the, most of the whales that we have today, they evolved from land mammals that started to come to the ocean, started to explore the source, the resources that were there, the fish and other creatures on the planet, on the, on the, on the coast. So the, the blue whales evolved from land mammal that were started to explore the resources in the saline, so fish and other food resources from the ocean. And then these animals started to evolve more and more into different uh, species, more well adapted to the ocean environment. So it started to modify their pectoral fins and they lose their, leg, their legs and started to get more adapted to swim. And then eventually in 55 million years ago, the modern whales started to dominate in the ocean. How so, amazing. So what you're telling us is blue whales originated on the land and they slowly moved into yes. the water. And the blue whale that we saw today, uh, 55 million years ago, was a land animal. That's crazy. Yes, it's crazy. Amazing. So <laughs> blue whales are part of this thing that we call the food chain. And blue whales are the top of the food chain. That's what I understand. Yeah, they, they actually eat uh, small creatures. They eat zooplankton. So they are, it's a very short um, sequence of the food chain, so the stages of the food chain. Uh, so pretty much you have the primary producers, you have the zooplankton or the krill that will eat this phytoplankton, and then you have the blue whales. So it's a very short food chain. But the blue whales can go up to a, a one ton of krill in one day. So they can eat a lot of these very small creatures. Wow, and how yeah. important is ice like this for producing a habitat for krill to grow? Yeah, so the ice have a very important uh, a role to play on the phytoplankton dynamics. So the phytoplankton will be trapped on the sea ice and during the winter time it's going to be in a dormant state on that. So zooplankton as the krill can uh, kind of graze on the ice and eat this algae that is trapped on under the ice. Right. But when the spring started to melt the ice, this uh, phytoplankton will be released in the water and then they will be uh, they will find uh, very good conditions with sunlight to start it to blooming and then it's more food for phytoplankton and then it's more food for whales. Wow, so basically what you're saying is if we can keep the earth nice and cool and protect icebergs and, and ice sheets and sea ice like the one we're seeing behind us, we can preserve life like phytoplankton and therefore save the blue whale. I understand that 50% of all the world's oxygen is produced by phytoplankton, exactly. not forests. No, not forests. Exactly. How interesting. Yes. It's, it's Exactly, and also not only that, phytoplankton it's important for every single creature, even us. So the, every 
breath that we take, it comes, the, the first breath that we take, it comes from the forests. But the second breath we take, it comes from the phytoplankton. So the oxygen that we are breathing, it comes from the photosynthesis after the phytoplankton. So it's, it's pretty much important for every single creature that is on this planet. Okay, so my last question to you is this, how can we change the way that we live our lives to protect the ecosystems and the habitats all over the world so that animals big and small can be saved and preserved? Well, every single act that we do back home will impact on the planet, especially when we are talking about plastic. So plastic today is one of the biggest problem on the planet, but it's not only the plastic, but what we call the microplastic. Microplastic can enter in the food chain via the consumers, so they can future this microplastic in the water and this will be accumulate over the food chain and reach whales for example and even us when we eat fish or even uh, some other seafood we can actually consume as well this uh, microplastic there, there is a researcher that says that uh, we are eating one uh, one credit card worth of plastic per year. Per year. So it's quite uh, something that we started to, it's a micro problem I would say, but yes. it's a big and huge problem that we should have a look with um, a little bit more care. Yes, okay. Okay, so this week what we want you to do is first of all start researching the food chain here in the Arctic Circle and then you're going to have a look at the food chain in your local community and have a think about how you can start to improve the way that your community, your families, your parents and even your teachers live every single day to try to sustain the ecosystem in your community and across the world. Thank you so much Daniela, it's been welcome. amazing to have you. It's amazing and thank you very much everybody and I hope you're more inspired to protect the oceans from now on.